For the nymph in this video, I'll be using a size 14 Orvis Tactical Check Nymph hook with a 764 gold bead. Start by attaching your 8 aught brown thread around the midsection of the hook, then bring in the crystal flash tail. For this particular nymph, I'll be using the amber color combination, so the tail fibers here are amber crystal flash. I'm going to snip the tail fibers off about half the length of the hook shank and give them one or two slight presses upward to crease them. After this, I'll come in along the far side of the hook and attach the wire, making sure that as I wrap rearward, the position of the wire remains fairly parallel to the hook shank itself. Once I've reached the back end near the tail fibers, I'm going to bring in one piece of tan ostrich hurl and attach that at that point and then return the thread just behind the bead. I prefer to grab a hold of this ostrich hurl with a pair of rotating hackle pliers. At this point, I begin to rotate the rotary vise, ensuring that I have smooth side-by-side -side wraps of the hurl as I make my way forward. I'm aiming for a point roughly two-thirds of the way up the hook shank. Once I reach that point, I'll tie off and secure the ostrich hurl with several secure wraps. As I begin to wrap the wire forward, I prefer to start with the hook upside down in the vise for the first one or two wraps. Once these are locked in place, I'll then rotate the fly upright and continue moving the wire forward. It's extremely important during this part of the process to wiggle the wire side to side. It allows a sufficient amount of hurl fibers to protrude from the wraps while still allowing you to construct a tightly segmented wire body. Once I've reached the two thirds point, I'm gonna throw down five or six wraps to secure the wire and helicopter off the excess. I then move on to put a small amount of Swax, which is a loon product on the thread. It just gives it a little bit of a tacky nature. It's important when creating this dubbing loop to be sparse with the fibers. We're looking for that loop to have a thin core with straggly fibers sticking out from the edges. Our goal is to create somewhat of a soft hackle effect where we have a nice solid flashy core with thin fibers coming out from the center that'll wiggle and move nicely once submerged in the water. As I begin to wrap this forward, it's important that I brush back the fibers with each wrap so that they don't become trapped in the subsequent wraps. Once I've reached the back of the bead, I'll secure with a couple thread wraps put in a five turn whip finish and clip my thread. At this point, the fusion nymph is done. The color combinations for this nymph can be adapted to suit a general imitation or a wide variety of insects on a wide variety of waters. I fish this pattern in setups ranging from double nymph rigs, a dropper underneath a large foam pattern, and even trailing behind a small streamer. 